for May 12th. I would like to welcome all to our May 12th Rush Town Board meeting. Will you join me please for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States, States of America. America and to the to Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and, and justice for all. Thank you. Will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Wilmer? Here. Councilman Corbin? Here. Councilman Lane? Here. Supervisor Cusey? Here. And Councilwoman Wickerham will be joining us shortly. Thank Town, you. Town Clerk, is, is it possible to start the YouTube? I, I know sometimes there's a delay. I don't know if it had started. I already hit start on it okay. and I oh. am recording. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, I've got a couple of announcements to make. Uh, the first one is the May 31st Memorial Day celebration will be at 12 noon at Veterans Memorial Park or Veterans Mill Park, whichever you call it. There will not be a parade. Uh, the veterans are getting older and they really don't have a lot of energy to walk the distance. So they wanna do a little ceremony at Memorial Park. And uh, they've asked me to say a couple of words there. So that's that. <clears throat> the other uh, thing I wanted to mention was, oh, that, I didn't have the other thing to mention. So we can move right into, oh, I know what it was. Um, when we get under old business and new business, there will be a couple of chains, changes to the uh, agendas that you may have. And I will announce those changes when we get to that particular subject matter. Right now, we're going to go to the public comment period. Remember, this is the public comment period where you make your statement, state your opinion. You can ask a question, but you won't get an answer for it. And please be aware that uh, there are other people around listening and be considerate of them. So who do we have who would like to make a statement? Supervisor, we have Evelyn Schaefer who would like to speak. So Evie, if you would unmute yourself and again, state your name and your address. Yes, Evelyn Schaefer, 6186 Rush Lima Road. I have some, uh, got some news that I needed to take care of. And we found that we know someone on the town board is going around saying all the residents across from the Moore property on West Henrietta Road are all in favor of the Jack Moore proposal. This is not true, Rush residents. A group of us visited every house on 15 and some houses on 251 and all are merely outraged and 100% opposed to the Moore project and do not want sewers. Thank you. Thank you. And supervisor, I will have to ask the town clerk if there's anyone else, because I made the direct messages just to you, Pam. Um, being co-host, I can't, I would have to be host to just get the messages. I did make you, you host. Oh, I see that now. <laughs> so the next person that does want to speak is Carl Ast. Thank you. Welcome, Carl. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I just also yeah. was uh, along the same lines as I guess what Evie was just talking about, the Jack Moore property. Um, I guess 
you know, I, I sat in the meeting, uh, planning board meeting too, it was in March, uh, where the engineer went through and talked about the project. Um, it's a conceptual plan. And I, I know uh, Jack Moore's a landowner that wants to develop his land. Uh, he's not a developer. So, um, but it doesn't make any sense because there are statements that said it does align with the comprehensive plan, yet it does not align with the comprehensive plan. The only thing that aligns with the plan that I can see is that half the property is mapped in the rezoning um, proposed in the comprehensive plan. But there's no sewers that were planned for the project. And the engineer says that they're, they're looking to add that. It's, it looks like it's limited industrial and does not allow the distribution center that they're proposing, which is the only uh, seems to be a serious contender as far as a tenant. And they're looking for a special use oh. permit, which so um, you know, why are we even entertaining this as a possible uh, rezoning at this time? We have a tech park um, just up the road that has six vacant parcels. And yet we're not pushing, the town's not pushing that to get built out. So it, um, and then we're in the process of updating the comprehensive plan. So that would be, make sense to include this in the comprehensive plan update and not act on it right now. So it's, um, uh, and from what I can see, you know, I, I go up to uh, Rush Henrietta Town Line Road right at the, near the intersection of 15 and I see three industrial sites in Henrietta across the street from Rush. If that's the plan, if that's the vision that we have for Rush, I don't think that's a good one. I think uh, I had a chance this weekend to drive the corridor of Route 20 all the way from here to Syracuse. And the creativity, the uh, things that are, are you know, representative of villages and towns along the way, that's something we should be including in a vision for this town, not a Henrietta style development um, in, in here, you know, we, we should look at plan unit development. We'd look at mixed use developments. We can look at a whole range of things that fit better in this town. So I, I think that both this property as well as Foster Brooks property you know, should not be acted on until the comprehensive plan is updated. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Supervisor, um, there's a comment, um, a Dan and Allison Pop. Um, have written in the chat. And if they would like me to read it, I'd need to know your address. If you could write that in the mm -hmm. chat so we can have that for the record. Or if you would like to speak what you wrote in the chat, I'll be happy to please unmute yourself and share your thoughts. Uh, I would like to speak if you can hear me. Can everybody hear me? I can hear you. Uh, I was informed by uh, we need, Mrs. We need name and address. Dan Pop, six nine six two West Henrietta Road, Rush, New York. Thank you. Uh, I got a visit from Mrs. Shaper last night, and uh, we are totally against the project going up there, adjacent from our properties. Uh, we don't want to see another industrial park come come into here. Uh, we live next to one. They got the dry food going. You can hear them ventilators going all night long. You can, or you can hear that in, in, industrial park that the gentleman before me just said, we can hear them working. So, I mean, it's becoming an, a little bit of a nuisance and I would like to just see it keep agricultural and not have a bunch of industry in front of my house. And we don't want to see West Henrietta turn into Southern Henrietta with all the, we don't want to see Rush to turn into a Southern Henrietta with all the development. We've, we have not been approached by anyone other than the meeting that we went to. And we are totally against it. We are not for it whatsoever. And the traffic alone is speaking. This is Allison Pop, same address, 6962 West Henrietta Road. 
the traffic that goes by our house um, and, the, and the intersection, which is a dangerous intersection at town line, I, I just can't see how you're gonna include more traffic and it being safe. Let alone having a trucking company. We have school buses going up and down this road. Um, the safety of those kids. I, I, on top of just normal people going back and forth. We we have Cole and Maine just moved in around the corner that took over Rosselli's. I, I mean, how many more trucking companies do we have to live by? We just want the town to know that we're not we're not happy with us. We would rather see the land be used for something that fits Rush better than another industrial park. It's not what we moved into this home, hoping to stay in this home the rest of our lives to, to see. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Pop. Supervisor Janet Glocker would like to speak. Janet, if you would unmute yourself and again, state your name and your address. Welcome, Janet. Thank you. My name is Janet Glocker. I live at 791 Rush Henrietta Town Line Road. There was an item in today's Democrat and Chronicle um, concerning a, the court in Rush. I would like in the future, perhaps Ms. Pereira could give us a report. I don't know what the court system provides. I don't know what the town provides. I don't know who pays for what. I don't know what happened. Um, and I don't know what the future safeguards there are in place so that we don't make the second page of the Democrat and Chronicle. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor, there is no one else in the chat asking to speak. All right, then I guess we can move on to the approval of minutes. Um, we have the regular meeting minutes of April 14th. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the town board meeting minutes of April 14th, 2021 is submitted by town clerk, Pamela Bucci. I'll second it. Aye. Councilman McCormick? Aye. Councilman Lane? Aye. Supervisor Cusey? Aye. Next, we have the approval of the regular meeting minutes from April 28th, 2021. Do I have a motion for approval? I can Don't table them. Thank you. They're not available yet. Right. All right, then we will table those until our next meeting. Thank you. Uh, we now have Councilperson Lang doing the approval of abstract, and I uh, notice that there is no transfer of funds, and I believe there should be, because I remember signing a transfer of funds request. So um, I don't know where it is or what happened to it, but we can at least read the approval of abstract. And if uh, Finance Director Pereira is on the call. She is. So I can do the abstract and the vouchers that I approved. Sure. Okay, having reviewed, I make a motion for approval, having reviewed vouchers number 377 through number 413 in the amount of $45,371.78 to be paid accordingly. Do I have a second for that? I'll second it. Mm -hmm. Councilman Wilover? Aye. 
Councilman Corbin? Aye. Councilman Lang? Aye. Supervisor Cusey? Aye. Thank you. And if Council, if uh, Finance Director Pereira is on the call, the meeting, um, do you have any advice for us on the transfer of funds? Sorry, hi, Jerry. My computer was frozen. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No worries. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I thought I put that in... Um, the folder, the voucher folder, but I guess I didn't. I can get you those amounts. Um, hold on just a moment. If, if you can hear, if you can hear me, Christine, I'd like the amount and the reason for that amount to be transferred. I can hear you. Sorry, I don't have it in front of me, so I have to pull it up. Okay, while you're searching, this is preventing me from pursuing my new mission to shorten meeting times. So if when you find it, if you could plague our attention, we'll come back to you. In the meantime, I'll go for reports from town board members and departments. And first on the list is Deputy Supervisor Corbin. Thank you, Supervisor. I attended the Conservation Board meeting um, last week. I also attended a planning board training facilita facilitated by Attorney Mancuso. Update on Tier 3 solar projects, the Helios project on Honey Eye Falls Number 6 Road. The developer has submitted an updated project plan. It's posted on our town website. And if you haven't had a chance to try our new town website, uh, it is found under the Community tab and then you click on land use proposals. Uh, myself and Councilwoman Wickerham will be doing an audit of the town clerk's office on June 24th. And again, the new website is up and running. It does take a little bit getting used to, but it's well worth it because it's fantastic. And thank you to Supervisor Secretary Catherine Hankins for all her hard work. And she continues her hard work. Uh, there are still parts that are under construction just click on the different parts, try your way around. There's a frequently asked questions, how do I, and even a part to submit your comments. So please give it a try. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Lang, do you have a report? Sure. Uh, the second meeting of the steering committee of the comprehensive plan was held on May 3rd. Um, and that uh, we took, are still continuing the review of the, of the current plan and developing a scope of um, what is needed for the future um, before we start uh, getting the assistance of an engineering firm to further help us in, in developing the comp uh, comprehensive plan. So next meeting is gonna be held on June 7th at 7 p.m. And going forward, we're coming up with this running date of, uh, of the second Monday of the month, which I think we have a resolution later on to be presented for setting that schedule uh, going forward to cut down on cost of the public notice that has to go out um, in the future. That deserves some applause, but I won't prolong the uh, meeting by 
giving it to you. I'll give it to you when I see you. Sounds good. Um, how about uh, Code Enforcement Officer Tracy? Is he on board? Then I did not see him. Okay, thank you. Then we'll move on to historian Sue Me. Nope. Uh, you may have noticed Sue Me's hours in the town hall are going to change because she is retiring after, I think, 35 years at RIT. So when you see her, congratulate her and welcome her to spending more time in the town hall. Uh, how about Assessor Minio? Is he on board? Nope. We've heard from Finance Director Pereira. Are you ready with the transfers, Christine? Um, yes, I, I put it in the chat as well, so you can. Okay, then you can verbalize it if you oh, would, sure. please. Sure thing. So we have um, 23,000 for the general fund, uh, 15,500 for the highway fund, and um, 4,000 for the library, and this is um, payroll related. Christine, no. it, this is Councilwoman Corbin. I do not see it in the chat. I'm not sure who. I can see it. Okay. <laughs> who knows, Pam? Well, sometimes you see it, sometimes I do. We'll get that figured out, so. And that's for payroll transfer, um, payroll nine transfer. Thank you very much. How is, how is your, well, you're no longer in training. Now that you have total responsibility, how is it going? It's going well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good, thank you. How about, Ms. Flash from the library. Supervisor Pusey, no if, if that is the transfer, do you want to do a transfer in funds and have a vote on it for the total? Oh, geez, I got out of order there. Yeah, we should. Thank you. Um, do I have a motion to approve the total transfer of funds amount? Pam, were they set amounts 15,000, 4,000, and what was the last one? 23,000, 15,500, and 4,000. I'll make a motion to transfer the funds from the appropriate accounts necessary to the amounts of 23,000, the amount of 15,500, and the amount of 4,000. I'll second it. Councilman Wilver? Aye. Councilwoman Corbin? Aye. Councilman Lang? Aye. Supervisor Cusey? Aye. And how about Councilman Wilver? Do you have a report? Yes, I do. Uh, I audited the uh, supervisor and the finance department with uh, <laughs> Council Person Wickerham. Uh, went over the books for 2020, everything, found everything to be in order. Uh, I attended a meeting of the North Rush Cemetery Association. They, uh, I've mentioned this before, they're, and they're having financial problems. And if we don't help them out in the future, the town's going to become responsible for the operation and upkeep of the North Rush Cemetery. So I think at budget time, we have to think about, um, perchance, figuring in something for them in the budget. Their month or their yearly bills are about twenty three hundred dollars. Uh, that's nah, almost twenty three hundred for mowing and about three hundred for insurance. So we might have to pay for them for a while. Otherwise, we're going to get full responsibility of the cemetery. In the meantime, they're putting together fundraisers. Uh, they want us, they're going to set up a, uh, a GoFundMe. They're going to set up a Facebook page to try to get interest. They have two fundraisers at the Elks Lodge this summer, uh, June 13th and August 15th, chicken dinners. They're going to sell to try to raise money to get up their, their uh, permanent fund. 
so that they can get back to a point of being self-sufficient. But in the next year's budget, we might have to help them out. Uh, I also went, attended a meeting of the conservation board. The conservation board would like to be known as the conservation board officially. They're the conservation commission and they would like to uh, receive all the plans for, uh, they have been getting them for both planning and zoning in the future. I don't know what legally we have to do to make them a board instead of a commission, but they were founded as a commission, <laughs> always been referred to as the conservation board. And that's, they'd like to be officially the board. Uh, see that's on the on the <clears throat> agenda for later. If you want to discuss it then, or I, I think that when we come to the uh, is that John Mancuso talking, or is that a dog growling? Uh, that's the dog. Oh, okay. When we get to the conservation board discussion number two, um, I we can ask Attorney Mancuso for advice on that. And right now I would ask you, Dan, do you think it would be better for you to be prepared with a written proposal at budget time or would you just like to be there and verbalize? Uh, I could put together a written proposal. It's, uh, I think in the long run, it's gonna help us. I mean, they're trying to, to get a better financial footing, but if we don't help them soon, we're going to get the whole shebang anyway. Well, whatever you can put together as a proposal to avoid pain, that would be great. Okay. Thank you. Um, I called on Kirsten Flash. Is she on board? She is not supervisor. She has no report for me to share. Okay. How about Town Clerk Busey. I have no report. Thank you. Pat Stevens, our Recreation Supervisor. I'm here. Do you have a report? Um, do you want me to go over what I had sent to the town board earlier, or do you want me to go over that later? We'll go over that later. Okay, everything's good in recreation. That's great, um, thank you. Okay. I don't think Mark David, the highway superintendent, is with us. So yeah, we're man. going we're going to go to building inspector John Limbeck. Good evening, everybody. How are you tonight? We are good. Good. I attached uh, earlier this morning, I sent out uh, my report. Um, I sent the 2021 building permit checklist for a review. Uh, to date, I've issued 46 building permits and I continue to receive a very steady flow of questions about permits and actual applications. I'm also continuing to contact the residents that have open building permits from 2020 because I'm trying to get as many of those closed as possible. Uh, I was able to submit the building condition report from our April 28th uh, tour of the Rush Riverside Refuge Facility. Uh, Rick Tracy and I will be placarding uh, entire buildings and uh, sections of some for either structural or health and safety issues. And I also verified with town attorney John Mancuso that the town does not assume any additional liability by virtue of placarding these buildings. Uh, so Rick and I are just trying to pick a date where we can get out there together and uh, put the placards up. Uh, number three, code section 585 uh, fees states that the cost of a fence permit shall be $10. Our fee structure or our fee schedule lists a residential fence at $50 and a commercial fence at $100. And I would like to suggest that the board change the wording in section 585 to read the cost of a fence permit shall be in accordance with the approved fee schedule. It was suggested that I put on the new website that we're having a fire sale on fence permits, but uh, uh, I, I think <laughs> not getting that changed. Uh, I was able to complete my mandatory PESH refresh, refresher training earlier today. I'll get that uh, certificate to the supervisor secretary tomorrow morning. 
I did receive the significant changes to the New York State Uniform Code Books, and they are truly a tremendous value. They identify specific code sections. They explain why the changes occurred and what we should be looking for in the field. They do contain diagrams where applicable, which enhances the explanation. And I, I do appreciate the board's approval of this purchase. Um, uh, there's two of them that are yet to be delivered, but um, they, are, they are a very good uh, resource for us. Uh, I'm very happy with the relationship that's developing between me and the planning and zoning boards. Uh, we have several applications where we're iron, ironing out specific issues and the collaboration really helps strengthen our relationships. Shelly O'Hearn uh, coordinates these efforts uh, so it, all the required parties are involved. And again, I think it just makes us more effective and more professional. Uh, I'm anxiously awaiting the restoration of the records room uh, so that the archival searches can resume in a much more efficient manner. I'm still looking for the 2000 zoning board book uh, for a variance that one of the uh, residents has been requesting. And not on here, but uh, I was a week early for our tour of the Rush Riverside Refuge today with the railroad group. Uh, I'm going to try to muster the same enthusiasm for next Wednesday, but it looked really nice over there. So unless there's any questions, uh, that's my report for tonight. I will just make a comment, and that is your building department report and your list of new permits is unbelievably helpful. I really appreciate that. And I want to go on record in public as saying thank you, John. Oh, you're welcome. And if, if any of the board members want to see any other information, uh, just let me know and I can make sure you're getting that. Um, we are working, uh, trying to determine if we can do a building lot summary uh, that uh, Councilman Lang looked at. Uh, we're just not sure what the mechanics of that would be. So uh, we're still looking at that, you know, between myself, Pam, uh, Augie, you know, just looking at different things we could do. So more to follow on that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And now, last but not least, our attorney, John Mancuso. No report. I gave you last, John, so you could really expose. But we'll wait because you're coming up again. Okay, we can move on to old business. And for those of you who looked at the agenda, you can see that number one Tree City presentation is still on the agenda, but I canceled it. And the reason I canceled it was because I had numerous people remind me that I was being insensitive to people who didn't wanna hang around for a meeting after nine o'clock at night because they had to go to work in the morning because they had to go someplace. So we are cutting back on our agendas and you'll see meetings go faster in the future. And the Tree City presentation will be on the May 26th agenda. Expect it there for Carol Barnett to make a presentation. I think it's gonna be Carol. So um, Dan, did you give us a complete update on the conservation board status or is there anything else you'd like to add? I think John, uh, Dan had a question that I couldn't answer and uh, you may remember and here's your chance. So the issue about the conservation board, if we want to change their statutory power, then we need to amend the code since their authority is derived exclusively from that one provision that was adopted in the 70s, creating them as a commission. So if we want to, we can um, modify that, likely would be a repealing of the chapter and a re-adoption of something new that calls them, you know, a conservation board and empowers them to undertake you know, a series of things that would be, um, you know, in accordance with what the town wishes. Right now, the board is advisory in its, uh, in its role. So it provides input to the zoning and planning boards on pending applications, but has no direct, you know, permitting authority. Um, so 
some of this may necessitate if, if that board is requesting a expansion or modification of powers or simply a change to a conservation board, um, then uh, you know perhaps that board could undertake some initial investigation of, of code provisions or other things that they're looking for for the town board consideration or the town board can do that directly. Um, you know, and look look towards other statutes, other towns that have conservation boards uh, to determine what would make sense for the town of Rush. Councilperson Woolaver, could you work with our attorney and put together a resolution that we can propose at the next board meeting? Sure. Great, thank you. Thank you, John. Not a problem. Um, I, I had one question with that. Oh yes, go ahead. With with the, with creating a board with the conservation board, would it create a duplication of efforts that's already being overlooked by the planning board, such as like a seeker review? Who then would have like, I mean, you're going to have multiple steps now for maybe an applicant to have to go before the conservation board for a seeker review because they're their granting authority. And that same review is done under the planning board's purview currently. So I think we should be cautious in developing the plan for what they're going to be seeking, you know, or, or go reviewing, um, not to duplicate efforts. They're pretty much okay with their, the scope of what they're supposed to do under the commission heading. They just would like to be known as a board. I don't know how much added authority. I'll have to talk it over with you, John. I, I don't know how much added authority. They don't really need any added authority. They just like to be recognized as a board. They've been the conservation board forever. And they just want to be sure that they're not forgotten about. I mean, they have input on all the plans. They want to make sure that they receive the planning and zoning, all the zoning and plans. And they have input and they just like to be recognized as having input and might be used in consideration on, in poor planning and zoning. But I'll talk it over with John, see what we can do. Okay. I, I, I agree with that Councilman Wolliver having been the liaison uh, in 2020 to the Conservation Board. Um, not knowing that uh, Councilman Lang, when I did the research in the code, it says that they're not even compensated, even though they are compensated. So our code definitely needs to be updated on that, on that chapter. The last amendment I saw for membership was, I think, local law number four in 1979. And our records, I can't go back that far to even know what that local law was on, on uh, e-code because it doesn't go back that far. So I guess I'll have to hit that records room. <laughs> but their, their input from the year that I spent with them um, is, is different from the site plan review, things like that. They, they, did a, they do a nice job. Um. Yeah. And Dan, that brings up a good point. When you sit with John and prepare a resolution, uh, I think it should include if there's any compensatory changes or stipend changes, I'll leave that up to you and John. Okay, uh, Julia Letterman talked over with um, Linda Henry about the, the early days of the conservation board. And Linda Henry said that uh, originally none of the, the boards were compensated, zoning or planning. And originally uh, conservation board also had support from the uh, clerk's office, but it was decided a long time ago that whoever the chairman was could take notes and, and submit them to the clerk for her to type up. And about the same time, everybody received a, a stipend for their work on the various boards. It all happened about the same time, quite a while ago. But it, it should probably be noted in their, in their charter as they move forward as a board that they, they should get their stipend, it should be legal. <laughs> I agree. Uh, thank you. Thank you. All right, anyone else? Then we will move on to the Monroe County Fair. Ryan, do you want to give a little background or would you like me to? On the fair? On the fair. Uh, go right ahead. I'm, 
You're way ahead of that on me. Uh, this this uh, is in regard to your uh, questioning the placement of the trailers over there and if there's any liability associated with that. And then I called the uh, chair of the fair committee who felt that they had previously received approval to leave them there as long as the fair was operating there. And uh, she assured me that there's no safety concerns, but there again, she's not the owner of the property and we are, so uh, we want to we want to make sure we don't get blindsided by something in that regard. Also, you may, may recall she questioned me about some things that the fair committee was told we were going to do, such as the horse barn roof and uh, such as doing some painting. And uh, Attorney Mancuso sent around the lease agreement that was signed with them. And uh, it came around late today. I didn't get a chance to read it all, but there certainly is use conditions specified in the lease agreement. So would you like me to put it back on the agenda for a future date or I leave it up to you? I was just merely looking at the property that was stored there. I have, uh, other than these two trailers, if, if everybody's watching, want to know what we're talking about, there's these two vacant tractor trailer boxes parked in front of one of the buildings that are, haven't been registered on the highway since 1996 and never been moved and have been parked there. And I was just inquiring about the fact that there's storage there. Um, it could be a, a haven for somebody to climb in or, or what have you, and it's on our property. So looking to get them moved out of there. I think Councilperson Wickerham had an additional request to discuss uh, where, where we think we are with the fair and where we want to go with the fair in addition to those trailers. And uh, considering that she is not here with us, I think I will put it on the next agenda so that we can discuss it in her presence with her questions and input, et cetera. Everybody in agreement with that? Very good. All right. Jerry, I think I have information about those trailers. Um, I remember them telling me that it was like tables and chairs and things of that nature that they needed to set up the fair. I'm just going back on memory here, but I remember asking them what was in it before and that's what they told me what was in the trailers, just so you know. All true, that's what Char told me last week. Yep. I think the stage is in there too. I think the stage is in the greenhouse. Oh, Maybe that? not. Maybe not. No, it's not. No, it's not there because I Amber and I were in the greenhouse and there's no stage in there. Thank you. Yep. All right. So we'll put that on the agenda for the 26th of May and we'll move on to the Rush Riverside Refuge request for farming. You may recall that I have been contacted by two ag operators, both wanting to utilize the 40 acres that exist between the railroad track and the uh, East River Road. There's a lot more than 40 acres, but there are two formerly used farm fields. And uh, after discussing it with this board, I went back to them and gave them some uh, conditions which they must satisfy to be able to come back with a proposal. Um, one of them came back with a proposal, the other one did not. And uh, I don't know where you wanna go with that. I think that uh, there's some public input that should be considered before we put our signature on the line to accommodate anyone uh, 
you know you read the proposal from the uh, is that your doorbell dan uh, yeah, put the on mute. i uh in the proposal that we receive um he implies that he is a organic bean farmer and i did check with one of my farming friends down in the york area who said yeah he does a lot of organic beans, but I think what we've got to do is uh, balance that kind of a use with what our citizens expect, especially with the Rush Riverside Refuge. And I leave that up to the team if you want to discuss that tonight or instruct me to tell the farmer who proposed use that we can't get involved this year, what, what would you like me to do? It'd be nice if we could raise some money to help support some of the buildings over there by farming. I mean, that, that was the original reason we started leasing out the land a while ago. I mean, there's, if we're, I mean, we're, we need money to, to do anything over there. And it would be nice to make some. I, I agree with you. I would just suggest that in front of uh, money, you put the word lots of. The word what? Lots of. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, uh, the last price I had on it, the roof for the building number seven was about 40 grand. And I don't know where we're going to get that money. Supervisor, I read I read the um, proposal from um, the local farmer and the organic nature of his um, work. My concern would be chemical usage, though, as far as uh, in a parkland setting. So uh, I am willing to entertain it and interested in listening, but at the same time, um, cognizant of the wrong kind of chemicals being put down. Would you be better prepared if I were to invite him to a meeting to state his intent? Well, he states he's going to use Roundup, and I know that's a no-no for the parks right. and recreation people. That's not but organic. It's, it's used, well, he says he's going to use it, but it's, it's used around the town. Anybody whose house backs up to a farmer's field, it's probably there. And I, I, I don't know. I don't think you can use Roundup on a, in parkland though. If, if, I think if we looked into researching the conditions required for use of that parkland. I don't know that it's anything different than that. I don't think any Roundup or similar agent could be used there without causing a problem or threatening a problem. So. Uh, Supervisor, could you reach out to the um, local farmer and have that discussion with with them to see that obviously that's our concern. What other options are there being a quote organic farmer? I would be happy to do that. Although I did read in his proposal that he intends a initial application of Roundup. After that, everything becomes organic. But knowing what Roundup, knowing what the status of Roundup is now across the country I don't know if I even am comfortable with an initial uh, broadcast. And you also gave them the parameters of which we wish to have for that farming that property. And that was being organic or totally organic with no use of pesticides. So if they didn't fulfill that initial request um, the first time, then, I mean, there's not much, you know, discussing <laughs> Roundup is Roundup. Um, it's still a pesticide. It's not the organic intention that we asked them for. So I don't know how much longer they're going to want to wait to put their crops in the ground, but their proposal doesn't 
doesn't fit what we asked him for. So I'd, I'd err on passing on the, on the money. <coughs> That's just me. How about Amber and Dan? Well, give, given he did send, he responded to you and given what Councilman Lang said, which I am in complete agreement with, um, I think it is the right thing to do to let him know the discussion we had tonight. And that is where we are leaning. And uh, if he has something else to say, wonderful. If he does not, then it doesn't fit with what we are doing over in that location. Well, remember, he came to us. We did not go to him. So uh, his compliance with our requirements is pretty uh, rigid, in my opinion. So I will reach out to him. I will have that discussion. I will report back to the board. Very good. Now we can move on to Councilperson Lang, who wants to give us a quick update on the comprehensive plan. Sure. Um, I have sent out to all the committee members, as well as the town board, as well as the town clerk for posting of the minutes of the meeting, as well as the um, Zoom meeting was also posted on the webpage um, and downloaded for everybody's viewing pleasure. Um, the meetings um, go by quickly, even though it's a couple hours. Um, there's a lot to go through. And we're still in the um, early stages of doing that. Um, a lot of uh, things that have to be reviewed that haven't been reviewed in some time, some things that have changed since 1993 and, and uh, aren't pertinent anymore and, and stuff that is still at the forefront of, of what we're looking at. So um, it's definitely going to take some time. Um, we're going to have to eventually enlist the help of probably a an engineering firm for a consultation and, and getting this thing written. But we were just basically, uh, just recently made aware of um, some grants from the Department of State. Um, and, and especially if the town is proposing what has been dubbed the smart growth approach, it's right in their terminology. So we have to weigh all this um, into consideration and, and even get a, some of these engineering firms will help write those uh, grant proposals um, for us. So as we don't have an in-house grant writer, I think it's necessary or important to research um, somebody that would be able to assist us in writing um, a grant of that magnitude because this particular one that just came out is gonna be very um, competitive to obtain and it, it pays for 90% of the comprehensive plan update. So if, a, if, our, if it's a $100,000 bill and they're paying for 90,000 of it. That's something that we can maybe handle. But next meeting is June 7th at uh, 7 p.m. Monday night. And it will be a link on our webpage. Bless you. Dan. Thank you. That's all good news. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And I look forward to similar pro progress in the future. Anything yeah. else? All right, we can move on to a subject that has been with us for a couple of meetings now. Council uh, Deputy Supervisor Corbin uh, was generous enough to use her time to go to the couple of towns. I know she got a report back from the town of Avon where they were using their uh, uh, rules and procedures, which tightens up how you conduct your business. It, uh, it doesn't make it so rigid that it becomes uncomfortable, but it tends to keep you on track, keep you focused and uh, kind of a, a grander scale of what I'm trying to do tonight with shortening the meeting. And uh, then the town clerk a week or two ago found a rule of procedure for the left hand board. Supervisor QC, you need to speak closer to the I'm, computer. I'm sorry. Computer. I'm sorry. Uh, that lady right there, the town clerk, 
found a town board, Rush Town Board rule and procedure, rule of procedure that was developed in 1996. And I've looked through this and I'm wondering how did this ever get lost? Because if anybody had using rules and procedures to run our meetings, why would they ever ignore this? I think it's pretty good. Amber, you were the one who initiated this. Uh, where is your opinion on this? Well, um, just like with the comprehensive plan, 1996 is quite a while ago. I think there was an update to it in 2000. I'm not sure. I think there were two, two versions of it that I saw that the town clerk shared with us. And it's 2021, and I think there's always room for improvement with what we have available to us. Um, and given we've had this on our agenda for quite a few meetings, my suggestion is to circulate this between the board and get their input. I've made some edits to the Avon one, which I think uh, works well, um, but I haven't gotten any feedback on it because I know we've had um, long meetings and people have been uh, not at all our meetings. We wanted to make sure everyone was here. And once again, Councilwoman Wickerham's not with us. And this is an important discussion. So if the board is, is willing, I, I would really like each of us to spend 15, 20 minutes uh, on our home computers and strike through, add uh, whatever we um, can do to streamline the process and procedure into the year 2021. Thank you very much. I don't know what everyone else thinks. Sounds good by me, Amber. Dan? Sure. So we're, that I will, works, I'll, send, me. I'll send out the, what, again, what the town clerk sent us and I'll send out the Avon one and we'll all work on it outside of our town board meeting and um, share it with each other and share it with the public. As far as the comments, we can each share and then hopefully uh, put this together by the next meeting. Great, thank you. Um, Councilwoman Corbin, yeah. did you see the note that Councilwoman Wickerham would like to come into the meeting? Oh, I, I'm not getting the messages, town clerk, for some reason. I do not know why. I see she's in the waiting room, so I will let her in. Take care of getting her in, please. You should be able to see her as well, Pam, right? Because I, you're, I made I you co-host. Oh, I, well, I, when, I wasn't able to. Okay. She sh oh, there she is. I'm here. I apologize for being late. I had a commitment for the senator tonight, so it ran a little bit late. Before we head back out of old business, I have one more thing to add under the comprehensive plan and I'll wait for the supervisor to return. Um, so I'll stand by on that. Um, Councilman Lang, would you, would you like the previous comprehensive plan meeting that was uh, recorded to also be put up? or I know we put the last one up. Is that something you would like us to do from now on? Put it on the town website? Yes, going forward, yes. Okay. Yep. Councilwoman McCorbin, was there a distinction of where to put those minutes or the information? Uh, Secretary to the supervisor was, didn't have direction on where those go because those aren't of my... When That's when good. I when I looked at the town website, uh, she had put them under. I think it's government comprehensive plan is on there, 
And I can share the screen and then she has it in the on the left hand side. If you'd like, I can show you. She has the YouTube. Oh, I, I can look. I just wanted the public okay. to see where it was. Okay. Jerry, oh, so. I had one more thing I have to add under um, the comprehensive plan. And that in, in the interest of keeping the cost down for public notice um, to, to make a resolution to have a standing meeting um, of the second Monday of every month at 7 p.m. So um, I'm gonna propose that and then make a resolution that the regular meetings of the comprehensive plan committee will be held on the second Monday of every month at 7 p.m. So we have a second for that. I'll second that. Do we need to clarify for the year 2021, 2022? 2021 excluding holidays. Okay. Councilman Wolver? Aye. Councilwoman Corbin? Aye. Councilwoman Wickerham? Aye. Councilman Lang? Aye. Supervisor Cusey? Aye. Thank you. Uh, Councilperson Wickerham, are you comfortable with the updates you've had here? Or would you like more detail? I'm fine. I can catch up with Ryan later. Okay, great. Um, we're into the new business category. And for those of you who look at the agendas, you see the Brooks rezoning proposal on there. Um, unfortunately, that's a little bit of a misnomer because uh, they are not ready to propose a rezoning. They are seeking guidance from the town board on whether or not they will need a rezoning. So they have scheduled to come back on May 26 to do their presentation and to seek our guidance. Will they need a rezoning? Can they go to a cluster? Can they, whatever. So be prepared with that. And they have sent out all of their paper material. And if they do need a rezoning, they are prepared to purchase the uh, application from the town clerk. Any other comments? Okay. Um, we talked a little bit about a resolution to update the town code fees, and we've got to schedule a public hearing. John has already told us he'd like to update the fence fee, and uh, don't know else what else might be available or, or ready for updating on that. Can we? Uh, can we schedule a public hearing on that? And uh, then uh, command John to make a complete list of updates. And I, Rick. Can I ask a quick, can I ask a quick question? Is the, is the public hearing designed to uh, solicit input on code revisions or because the, 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 if the public hearing is designed for a local law. We'll need to draft the local law first before we schedule the public hearing. I thought it was to enable residents to know what the new fee schedules would be. Oh, it, if if so, if we want to amend, if we want to amend the fees for the fence permit in particular, we'll need to amend the the, the law, the town code, in order to change it. If we're update, if we're just doing a different update to the to the fee schedule, we can do that by resolution without a public hearing. No, we have to change the code because that's where my understanding the concern is. So we'll have to do the local law first and then the public hearing. Is that my understanding? Correct. Okay. Then we should prepare the local law, uh, what, we don't have one that's complete, at least I don't think we do, but we should prepare a local law to present for resolution to hold a public hearing. I can have that ready for the next meeting. That's not a problem. Okay. Anybody else? 
Very good. Um, I'm going to jump ahead to number four, uh, the pickleball court painting, because I know Pat Stevens has some other uh, important items on her agenda. So if she could take us through the pickleball court painting, that would be great. Pat, are you with us? Yes, I'm with you. Pam, can you paint? You muted yeah, you yourself. You muted yourself. Councilman McCormick, I don't have control any longer, Pat. She's not muted anymore. No, I, I'm not doing anything. She keeps, Pat, can you unmute yourself? There we go. Finally, it worked. Sorry, folks. That's okay. Sorry. How is everybody tonight? We're good. Okay. Um, the first thing I want to mention I've heard everyone talk about uh, the Rush Riverside Refuge as being parkland. Um, it's not a New York State registered park. So I, I just wanted to throw that out there. I wasn't sure if anybody knew that, but um, it has to be officially designated as a New York State park to be parkland. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, so anyway, I just thought that was interesting. I just thought I'd share that. As far as the pickleball and basketball court, um, I've sent out five requests for to get um, prices on having the basketball court uh, power washed, sealed lines, and then sealing. Um, there's not a lot of companies in this area that offer this service. So I have had a difficult time finding someone that would get back to me. I did get two proposals. I showed them to Jerry and I I did send everybody what I had received so far. Um, I'd like to be able to do it soon while people can enjoy the basketball and pickleball courts um, while it's still really nice outside. Um, does anyone have any questions or thoughts on it or anything like that? Uh, Pat, uh, I had the advantage of having you show me the uh, customers of the first guy, I think that showed from Penfield, the person from Penfield. Do you have a similar document from the other one? Um, yes, and I sent it out to everybody today. It's from Sealmaster. They also sent me a proposal oh, okay. as well. I think, did everyone receive that other one too? Mm -hmm. Okay. So and, the, other, well, the other one was about, I don't know, 5,000 or 6,000 more than the other one. Yeah. yeah. I have a question for our attorney. Uh, and that is, you know, Pat kind of like led me into this before, John, and that is there's, there's not a, a abundance of people who do this kind of work in this area. She has sent out RFPs and gotten two responses back. Uh, I told her today, I wanted her to bring that information to this meeting mm -hmm. because if she doesn't get another response, uh, we don't want to push this thing into July and August because right. it, won't, it won't benefit us then. What, what's, what's the total amount, uh, Pat? Um, the first proposal was, sorry. Okay. First proposal was 9,200. And the second proposal I received was $9,936.99. Um, we, we do have a recreation fund, um, which we do receive money for anytime someone builds a house, it, go, it goes directly into this fund. Um, last time I knew, I think there's maybe 35,000, I don't, I don't actually remember the exact amount, but I know that there's money in the recreation fund to take care of this, to pay for this. I'm just, uh, bear with me, I'm pulling up the procurement policy. I should be able to answer this question momentarily. Yeah, it was really hard finding someone that actually does this in this area. I ended up reaching out to a company in Ohio. Um, and I'm trying to think where the other one was located, but it wasn't local. But I didn't hear back from them, which I didn't think I would.
So Pat, can you explain what the specialty piece about this is? Um, the part that I thought was really great about this particular person, which he does a lot for a lot of towns in the town of Henrietta, Gates, um, is that he was gonna power wash the basketball court. The court itself has nothing on it right now. It's just like a concrete pad, there's nothing on it. And what came to light was the pickleball users in Rush really, there's a, there's a good diverse group of them that like to use a pickleball court and felt that um, because they were going to Henrietta, they didn't have first dibs to be able to use the court. So they asked me if we could have something. And I said, well, let's tape it first and see how it goes. The first day we taped it, the basketball players ripped it off the court. So that didn't work very well. So um, the other people had asked me to do the paint and I thought, well, if we're gonna do pickleball, we might as well do the basketball at the same time. But this particular guy will go in and power wash it seal it, put the lines down and then seal it again. So nothing will happen to the work that he does. So I, I, I think that proposal is a good one, Phyllis. Um, what I continue to be skeptical about is the vulnerability to vandalism. Well, if it's painted, they can't really vandalize it like they do ripping up the tape, I guess. They, um, what they, is your concern about that? They could, with a gallon or two of black paint, making it the same color as the black top. Well, that's true. Um, do we Too have cameras? Do we have cameras out there, Jerry? Do we have what? Cameras out there that we can see what the heck and who's vandalizing? Well, we have a camera on the judicious pavilion. That points to the basketball but court. But it's not a high resolution for that distance. Well, you wouldn't need high resolution to see if there are people on the court vandalizing the next day. We can always uh, monitor it, but I, I mean, I mean, I understand your concern. It just, it just amazes me that almost ten thousand dollars to seal and clean and stripe. Of what it, it can't be what I mean I don't even know how big it is but holy moly that, that's a lot of money. Well, what they do is they they power wash it, let it dry, then yeah. they seal it, then they paint the lines on, then yeah. they seal it again. Well, and they're so also going to be filling the dips in there. They call yeah. them bird baths, which but yep. that's, I mean they'll they're going to level the surface. I mean both of the quotes are going to do that. Um, it's it is quite an involved process. Yeah, I see that. It just, holy moly, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to wait on it? Does everybody want to wait on it, or? I honestly don't know if I'll get a cheaper version. And um... well, true, Pat. The one question that I do have, though, is how many people actually are using it? Well, there. I mean, is... I know. Um, we have about 20 pickleball players that want to play. Really? Yes. Yes. And actually, I've set it up with Kirsten with the library so they can come to the town hall, sign out the pickleball equipment, and then drop it off at the library at night. Because wow. That would actually like hand it off to each other as well. Wow. Play. So that's, um, there's quite a few people that I know would use it. Basketball is every weekend. It's uh, there's always um, people playing basketball in the evening and on the weekends as well. So, but the basketball is not a reserved like the pickleball no, would be. No. So it's pickleball, no. we have people come in, sign up, uh, take out the equipment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know when they're there. Yes. Yes. How come we don't do that for basketball? Well, basket, and I said to the pickleball people, what are we going to do if the basketball people show up? And they said, Pat, our schedule is so different than the basketball people. She said, you know, they have that in Henrietta. And she said, their timing is completely different. The pickleball people are there first thing in the morning. Okay. And then they usually leave around lunchtime or one. Sometimes they're there in the afternoon, but very rarely. They said they like to do the morning routine because it's cooler It'll be in the summertime. True. True. So they said that they very rarely will have a problem, but 
If they do, it's first come, first serve, and they will do the honor system. If they're there, they'll tell them we'll be done in an hour or so. And they said it works in Henrietta. They don't have a problem. So I where was, do they play in Henrietta? Um, I think it's behind. Um, it would have to be at the high school or there's actually courts in Menden as well. Okay, so they're they're not the town town uh, facilities that they're no. playing in Henrietta on. It's no, just, no, okay. but they do. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm surprised that Henrietta let them this year, last yeah. year. Uh, I yeah, I know, I know. And actually, they last spring they were, they were asking a lot for it, and I felt really bad because of COVID, and I didn't feel comfortable yeah. spending the money. I didn't know where we were going. Um. But right. we do have the, the reserve fund, which the last time we did utilize it was to buy the volleyball net and the poles for the pavilion. So, right. And that was a few years ago. So I'm really asking for more of the senior population in Rush because it's a big sport among the seniors. Really? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. They designated courts in Florida and everything. <laughs> really? so, oh, okay. yeah. Okay, then explain pickleball. I thought it was kind of like a tennis. It is, but it's on a smaller court. Okay. And the, and the net itself is not as big either. Oh. And it can be portable. It's a, it's a smaller version of like a tennis court. Okay. So they're not nearly as um, uh, a, a hard activity as a tennis game would be. So that's Maybe. why the senior population yeah. is more Maybe. drawn to, okay. Yep, they right. disagree with you. They'd say it's the same workout, but you know, okay. it's smaller. It's a smaller, On a smaller scale. Okay. Yep. Huh. Attorney Attorney Mancuso, have yes. you been successful? And do we need an RFP? What's so under our procurement policy guideline eight, a good faith effort shall be made to obtain the required numbers of proposals. In this case, three, because we are under ten thousand um, dollars. If we are unable to obtain that required number, then we just need to document the attempts that we made to solicit those proposals. Right. But it shall not inhibit our ability to uh, retain the required contract. Yeah. All right, what's the, uh, what's the wishes of the board? If we have that many people who are really interested in having this, I don't have a problem with that. I just, um, and and I guess I, I to, to your point, Jerry, is the um, the security of it. Um, I, I guess I don't. We might have to talk, have a talk about how to secure the basketball court to begin with. If we're having vandals over there, just arbitrarily you know, coming in at their whim. I, I mean, but that's a whole different discussion. I don't have a problem with this. If well, Pat the, has the money. Yeah, the basketball court gets locked at night. They do shut and lock it at night. The only thing we've had at the basketball court is garbage. Mm. People love to leave their garbage behind, which has been on and off all last summer. Um, we had a garbage can out there. It worked for a while. They still were putting it like, they set it on the court and then they just walk out. So we still have a problem with that, but they, other than them pulling the tape up, they haven't, they did break the backboard, but I think it was, it was a handicapped backboard. Um, and I think they were stuffing the basketball and it actually had broke from being adjustable. So Mark had to, um, he had to put it in place, make it stay in place because of that. But it's just rough housing stuff. It's stuff that, people do when they play sports they did know. they did clip the locks once or twice that well and they actually climbed over the fence during covid so um but you know that's well, you know it looks problems. it looks like we can authorize the task if the board agrees to it i hear one in agreement What's the downtime, Pat? Do we know how long it's going to take them for the turnaround time? To no, see I, haven't, no, I, haven't, I haven't spoke to him yet about it, but I would think two or three weeks just to make sure. But um, I can find out, Ryan, and get back to you on that. Well, just so the players don't go out there and, and go on a wet surface that's not completely dry. 
Well, we would lock it. So like, yeah, that's true. That's true. We could put a sign up there, you know, hopefully they won't climb the fence, but they mostly did that because they couldn't get any other basketball court, you know, back then nobody could play anywhere and they all fled to rush because they could climb over the fence and nobody would say anything to them. But now that everybody's playing everywhere, I don't think that's going to be so much of a problem If they know the court is being done. I think they're going to be extremely happy that we have the lines. So it'll be much different for them to play if there's lines. Well, it looks like you have the approval, Pat. So I guess it's have at it. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions or I can let you know about the time. I'm not really sure how much time Ryan it will take, but I can find out. That would Jerry, be good. do yeah. we have to do a resolution to authorize Pat to spend the money? Pam I, said yes. I thought uh, Attorney Mancuso said it was under the bid amount. So I'm now deferring to him to say, do we need a resolution to authorize Pat to spend that much money? I'm going to guess yes. Yeah, we just don't need a third third quote as long as Pat can document that she made attempts to solicit the three and that was you know due to the special nature of the uh, of the contract we couldn't pro procure three. So pick if you wish to pick one of the two that that is you know to your satisfaction. Then yes, you want to do a resolution to authorize uh, the expenditure in an amount not to exceed. Would anybody like to? take a freelance resolution to the board. Well, we're gonna to have to figure out which one of these we wanna do, the 9,200 or the 9,600. We're not required to take the lowest. Is there a difference? I'm not seeing that there's a difference in the, the, um, the proposed work. I mean, my, I my suggestion no is that the resolution be stated so that the cost does not exceed 10,000. Other than that, the two proposals are very close together. The, the town board needs to pick the contractor. So the town board is gonna need to pick which one it wants to authorize uh, to enter into, because we're gonna need, I'm assuming, I haven't seen either of the proposals, Pat, but they're not contracts, right? They're just proposals with quotes. Yeah. Yes, they're only proposals. And the first one that I sent, the Super Seal, um, he has about 55 um, towns. Customer satisfaction. Colleges, universities he's already done as far as, you know, the basketball courts. And um, he actually plays pickleball himself. So he's familiar with the pickleball court. Um, but the town of Riga, Leroy, Parrington, Penfields, Ogden, Menden, he's done all these towns. He's got probably 50 on the sheet. Yeah. You know, the ones that I sent you. So I yeah. mean, he has a lot of experience. So okay. that is the one that has the 9,200 quote. Yeah. And they're local. Yes, they're local. Yes, they oh, are. Oh, that's true. The other one's in Buffalo. I was just saying. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm good to go. Would anyone like to venture with a verbal? Proposal? Sure, I can I can do one. I so move to make a resolution to hire super seal seal coating of PO Box 925 Penfield, New York for business to be conducted at the town of Rush pickleball and basketball court for the purpose of resealing and relining the courts in the amount of nine thousand two hundred dollars not to exceed. Thank I'll you. Second it. I'm sorry. Councilman Wilver? Aye. Councilwoman Corbin? Aye. Councilwoman Wickerham? Aye. Councilman Lane? Aye. Supervisor Cusey? Aye. At Pat, if you can get a contract from them, whatever their standard form is, and have them chip that over, I'll take a look at it. Okay, we'll do that. Thank you so much, everyone. And it'll really make a big difference on the court. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Now we can move on to the technology options if we're ready for board meetings. I, I remember when John Mancuso 
brought his owl and I thought that did a pretty good job, but I've heard a couple of people say, oh no, there's much better devices out there than that. So uh, have any of you researched the much better devices? Supervisor, this is Councilwoman Corbin. I sent around uh, quite a detailed um, set of information given I am by no means an expert on any of this. I don't presume to think any of us are. And the feedback I was getting from many residents. Um, so I reached out to uh, Dave Slaberski. Uh, we met, he has offered assistance before. He's not looking to do any of the work, but just to bring us into the 21st century. I know when I attended a meeting at Avon, they have a very large monitor so that people are on Zoom presentations, things like that. Um, so not quite sure where to move forward. Um, the OWL was of interest. Um, it did work well for that one meeting, but I think if we are looking to truly bring us into where we are in person, uh, good audio, as well as presentations for our boardroom. Um, I'd like to make sure that we are looking at all our different options and uh, what people and different vendors have to offer us. You know, when I looked at Mr. Stoberski's suggestions, I'll call them, um, did he indicate whether or not you could tell him where you want to start and then build on and stop when the cost got absurd? Was that, was that part of the discussion? Yes, but again, he would not be the vendor. We would, he right. gave us different options as where to start the, you know, everything or start in between or, or smaller or, or whatever. But when you do look at that TV monitor that we have in in the boardroom, you could be sitting in the front row and really not be able to see it very well. Our microphones um, are, are decent, but I was so surprised that we actually have speakers in the ceiling, which having sat at board meetings for years, you can't hear anything out of them. None of that is fine tuned. We've got the equip equipment there. It just needs to be an expert come in and really put it together along with the additional uh, technology. I, I will take a, I will go out on a limb and suggest that we probably will go to live meeting status in June or July, unless there's some great new revelation that we shouldn't do that. Do you well, think- we can go to a live meeting now. Other towns are already holding them. We know that, Phyllis, but it's difficult because of scheduling people to get in. We don't want to turn anybody away at the door, so I don't want to have any large live meetings now. We will do it in June or July, and we will do it with a organized approach to where people aren't feeling like they are second class because they got turned away at the door. Um, Deputy Supervisor, do you feel that you could visit again with Mr. Slaberski and have like a uh, list, go down the list type of uh, approach? Well, there are, I mean, Mr. Slaberski's report that Amber sent out to us was um, detailed in a plan. Um, there was no cost associated with it. There are several other companies um, within the community. Uh, there's a gentleman in Henrietta. I was just at the state of the town address in Henrietta today and uh, Brian, I um, can't remember Brian's last name, but he has a company that does all of this kind of thing. And he put together um, the, uh, the audio visual and the Zoom connection and for the state of the town today. And it worked very well. So, I mean, I think that um, Mr. Slaberski's uh, plan is a good um, thing to work off of, but I think we need to look at companies that would be able to provide that um, 
service to us, whether it be and that and and Phyllis, that's exactly what uh, Mr. Sloberski said. He's not yeah. interested in right. being the vendor. Right. He's interested as a rush resident. did an evaluation to help us. Right. What do we right. have? And right. then either yeah. share some um, vendors with us. If right. Councilwoman Wickerham knows a few, but yeah. if we can find someone locally in the town of Rush that has that kind of a business that we can support, bring them in and uh, see what what our options are. Right. Well, Deputy and you know we can do a hybrid you of, make of contact both. With Brian, pardon. What was I that supervisor? Asked the deputy supervisor if she would like to make contact with Brian to initiate that kind of feedback. I, I will reach out and I'll talk with Councilwoman Wickerham, get names as well as uh, Mr. Slaberski for the people he knows in town that offer those services as yeah, well. Yeah, and I, I anticipate that this is going to be another $10,000 job. So we're it's going to have to go out to bid. If we're going to do, I mean, we can do it in pieces parts, but it's one of those things that all of those suggestions that Mr. Slaberski had really involve a pretty complicated um, upgrade to the town hall. And that's a discussion we're going to have to have. Are we ready to invest the other pieces? Um, uh, I didn't. I didn't read anything in Mr. Slaberski's report about someone to manage that because um, when you have that type of a, a structured IT system, usually you have to have an expert who knows how to run it. And I don't think I know, and I don't think Mrs. Corbin knows how to run it. So I guess that would also be, will we have a um, IT person that would well, it, uh, navigate the system. And that's yeah. something that the town clerk has shared that this needs to be a discussion for all of us to be working on since this impacts all of us and all of our departments. So Right, so are uh, we gonna, it's I, a budget. I will, I will be happy to take that on this week and I'll speak with the town clerk and I'll speak with Councilwoman Wickerham. Pam, did you have something you wanted to add? I just saw you unmute. No, I just um, would rather somebody else other than the town clerk's office handle that. I know we oh, went out and got a grant for the system that we currently use, but there was no additional contract used for an IDT department to make any specifications for it. So right. something that we currently have should also be looked at to see if it can be improved rather than getting a whole new system. And, and, and I'm concerned right. with recording. Exactly, and, and Mr. Slaberski did look at that so he has that knowledge and, and um, I wanted to bring you into it, obviously, because as a town clerk, you need to be intricately involved to make sure what we're looking at is something that will work for you as well. Not for you to run it, but that it right. will work there, for you. Yeah, there were some <laughs> other suggestions that were in there. I talked to Supervisor QC regarding them that they've been discussed over and over with other department heads and um, board members in the past. So okay, it was a lot of the stuff was nothing new. <laughs> okay, well, for us, it is. So thank you for that. Thank yeah. you, Supervisor. So, Deputy, uh, keep me apprised and we'll get you on the agenda when it's appropriate. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, and the right old field system. What's when was that? The, when, was the, when was the current system installed? Process. Town clerk would have to answer that one. That's what I was asking. Mm, I'd say maybe five years ago. Oh. It was when uh, Supervisor Anderson was supervisor. Okay. So, okay thanks. You're welcome. Anyone else? Thank you to all, and I look forward to the proposals that we could get to upgrade the system for our residents. Um, right now, I want to go into the public comment system because after that, we're going into the attorney client session. And there probably are people who might not want to stay around till 11 p.m. So uh, if we could enter the public comment system or portion of this right now. Uh, this is where you can ask a question, get an answer. This is where you can make your comment. And uh, this is where you please 
remember there are other people in earshot and be kind and considerate to all who can hear. Supervisor, this is Councilwoman Corbin and I will um, ask for the town clerk's assistance given we were trying our uh, best. Um, please write your name and your address in the chat feature, which is working tonight. We'll call you in the order that you appear. If we don't see your name there, if you're on a phone, you may um, unmute yourself and again, ask to speak since you can't add to the chat feature. I do see a hand up. Um, so Joanne Scanlon, since you are our first person, again, if you can unmute yourself and turn your video on, share your name and your address, we'd appreciate it. Um, yep. Hi, how are you? Um, I just wanted to follow up on um, going live with the meetings and I'd like you to um, just keep in consideration continuing the Zoom aspect of the participation. Um, I know that there's still going to be people regardless of um, what the numbers are that uh, are still going to be hesitant to go out into large groups, large um, gatherings. And I also think this is a really good way to have more um, community participation. There are a lot of people who can't get out to go physically to a meeting, but to sit down and, and be part of Zoom, they can. Um, either physically they're not able to, or they have family constraints, maybe they have children they'd have to bring along with them or find a babysitter. Um, so I just would like to have um, the board kind of keep those things into consideration as you move forward to in live um, uh, in live board meetings. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, that plan that you suggest is in place to go forward. I got a thumbs up. That's good. I. Uh, yep, great. Thank you, Joanne. I do not see anyone else in the chat feature. Town Clerk, I'm not sure if you have anyone. Okay. Sorry, I, just, I don't see anyone other than, and I think, I don't know if Carl wants to speak again or if that's his first. That's why I was just going to ask him if he wanted to comment on his comment. Carl, did you want to say something? Uh, no, I, I, I'm fine with, uh, okay. with that. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I don't see anybody else. Okay. Then given that no one wants to speak, I have to assume that everything we talked about was fine and we will now move into an attorney client session. Uh, that will be with attorney Gary Abraham. And uh, I will adjourn this meeting. All in favor? Actually, um, there's a, oops, there was a hand raised. I oh. think, I, I think she was clapping. Oh, <laughs> okay. If, if um, I am not included in the attorney client, if I would ask that somebody would take notes, if there's anything and, and, Tell me when the meeting would, would be ending tomorrow. You are, you are included, Pam. Oh, okay. Now, su supervisor, the, the people that are included in the meeting, um, our supervisor, attorney Abraham, council persons, Wooliver, Wickerham, Lang, Corbin, and Residents United, Janet Glocker, and John Cameron. So the town clerk is, is not needed in this meeting. Uh, I would like the town clerk there. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, would, would the board wish for me to be part of this or not? I'd like to <laughs> have you there, name. John. I, I, I think that there, I would prefer not. O only because of perhaps some of the dis discussion that might take place. Not about you, John, but about uh, some other items that we could be discussing. Well, the only items we should be discussing is the Horseshoe Article 10 project. Well, I had you on the agenda, Phyllis, so be okay. careful. Okay, sounds like a plan. So town clerk, I, since you are the supervisor would like you joining us, would you like me to help 
put people in the waiting room. Would you like to do a resolution to close this and go into attorney client? I so move to enter into attorney client privilege session with attorney Abraham at 843 p.m. on May 12, 2021. I'll second. I'll second. Uh, Councilman Wilver? Aye. Councilwoman Corbin? Aye. Councilman Wickerham? Aye. Councilman Lang? Aye. Supervisor Cusey? Aye. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Good night. John. And remember, uh, John Cameron and Janet Glocker will be joining us as well. Okay. And Gary Abraham. Yeah, don't exit. Yes, <laughs> don't put Gary Abraham. And Phyllis, why I wanted you included. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute, Supervisor. Okay. Jerry, I have to be included. I'm part of the board. Well, I understand that. Believe me, I do. But I also want you to understand what time it is. <laughs> and considering what time it is, um, Okay. I think I think we've got an opportunity to make a lot of people happy here. So we're gonna stop. We're gonna, well, there's stop. only us. We're gonna, we're gonna stop recording. Well, wait, wait a minute, because we still have guests in that yeah. I can see. Yeah, you have to put them in the waiting room. The only people I see in the meeting are as Wolliver, Jerry, Phyllis, Ryan, Gary, Janet, and John Cameron. Okay. Here we go. So that's what you, we need. Okay, so and, you and don't Pam. see Councilwoman Corbin, you don't see Jim Morelli, Julia, Kate. No. They're they're what, in the waiting room. They're in the waiting room because I can't tell that anymore. Okay. Let since you're with me still, Pam, let me switch you over to host. Okay. Okay. Yep. One second. I almost made Dan host. <laughs> All right. All right. Pam, make sure that that looks all right, and then we can stop the recording. Yep. Motion to adjourn. All in favor, aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Favor. Have a good night, all. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.